Hi and welcome to the Market Alert uh, for Monday the 12th of April 2020. So Friday the market surges back to overbought as investors go all in. Uh, however there's a bit of weakness overnight which we'll look at in just a moment. As it says here there is never just one cockroach. No, all of those stimmy checks going into the market are helping to keep it uh, aloft at the moment. Uh, Goldman don't fight the Fed. The Fed wants higher inflation and we'll get it too right. Never ever fight a central bank or any bank for that matter which uh, I've spoken of since February when uh, silver hit $30 an ounce and was tried to be cornered by uh, the Reddit and Wall Street bets. I said at the time you got no chance they will move the market when they do and when they do move it then you want to be on the right side. Uh, simple as that. So what uh, I've um, uh, traded my whole life on is never trying to fight what uh, the smart money is doing. You've got to go with the smart money, otherwise uh, you're wasting your time. It's just a financial suicide. As it says here, what the central bank wants is usually what it gets sooner or later, and it will. And that's another reason why they've been accumulating gold since 2010 as well, by the thousands of uh, tons as well. And because eventually they know they're going to have to use it. But let's suppress the price for the next 10, 15 years whilst we do it. Uh, apparently Powell's been on 60 minutes, so the economy seems to be at an inflection point. Uh, yes, I would agree with that as we come out of the lockdowns and the furloughs, you're going to see a spike in the economy. There's no doubts about that as things go back to some sort of, uh, I wouldn't call it normal, but uh, a semblance of normality, you're going to uh, see this. Uh, and as it says, you're going to see the economy about to start growing much more quickly and job creation coming in much more quickly as well, which again is no surprise really. We're going to have this spike up in everything looking great and then uh, it's all going to go uh, pear-shaped as uh, the reality kicks in. And of course, where we're heading to eventually, and I've spoken about this before as well to uh, friends, and others that uh, we're eventually we're going to end up with a crypto pound dollar etc and uh, on those uh, cryptos you won't be able to save them you won't be, be nothing like the financial system that we have now and china's uh, leading the way with this it's great to see confirmation again of another so-called conspiracy theory that uh, i dreamt up apparently but uh, the money itself is programmable. Beijing has tested expiration dates to encourage users to spend it quickly for times when the economy needs a jump start. So once we've gone through some sort of reset, you won't need the Fed. They'll just uh, the currency. Everything that you spend on will be tracked. Your every move will be tracked. In the first totalitarian tiptoe into this, of course, is the COVID passports. So that everywhere you go, you present it, you know, to a machine. They can see exactly where you are, as you can with the mobile phones. And then, of course, it will be um, biometric uh, scanning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, face recognition and all the rest of it for the social security or social credit system, which is uh, coming to a place near you very quickly. And if you don't believe that, then just go and have a look at the headlines from last week about uh, facial recognition machines to be used in pubs and other venues. So this way, of course, it's it's good for the uh, our, our esteemed leaders to uh, monitor everything that we do and also remove uh, the uh, cash payment system, you know, cash in hand for a job, etc. Everything will be accountable for, and that's what they're heading for. And that's what uh, the World Economic Forum are also uh, interested in as well. And the reason for this, of course, and this is a brilliant article. I've not had a chance to read all of it, uh, but for years I've been looking for somebody that would put the value of the dollar, what it's what it was worth in, you know, 100 years ago to what it's actually worth now in its purchasing power. So uh, again, have a look at this, visualizing the plung plunging purchasing power of the US dollar. And if you scroll down here, you will see, unfortunately, the graphic's not that brilliant. Uh, it's not the recording, it's just the, the graphic in there. But you can see what the purchasing power of uh, the dollar was back in uh, 19, I think that's uh, 1913. Uh, One dollar would buy you 30 Hershey bars of chocolate. Now, one dollar will buy a mcdonald's coffee so you can see the reduction in the dollar's value and purchasing power over the last uh, say 100 and uh, whatever it is years 17 years i think whatever uh it's 107 years yeah 108 anyway give or take 
But there you go. So uh, great to actually see this. And then also here you can see the uh, chronological order of uh, those data points in the chart as well. Meanwhile, in uh, the implied volatility, we're down to another new low at 1336. And again, like a broken record, the lower this goes, the bigger the correction will be in the markets as well. So again, we'll keep an eye on this one on a daily basis. The yield holding at 166 at the moment. It's been very quiet. Let's just have a look at the last uh, five days of this. It should be pretty uh, horizontal. It is. And news, not had a look at this, so let me just refresh this, see what we've got out uh, this week. Uh, today, Powell is speaking at midday. We've got a, a bond auction, 10-year bond auction. And then for the rest of the week, what have we got? We've got news out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and just a small amount on Friday. Uh, let's have a look, see what we've got central banker-wise. Uh, President Lagarde, or the crook, as she's known, We'll be speaking on Wednesday. Powell's again uh, out on uh, Wednesday at 5 p.m. And then you've just got uh, economic uh, data in between. So Powell busy this week with uh, presenting the case for the US dollar is uh, probably the best way to put it. Let's have a look overnight. Uh, we can see that uh, the Dow put in another all-time high on Friday. Uh, no end to the madness and as we see the economy open up uh, we're probably likely to see more of this uh, as well the new high is 33,803 and I can remove these at the moment as well so the what I'll be looking for here actually uh, we can actually do this is go from this low here back up to the highs and uh, draw in some short-term fibs there for uh, the downside and of course uh, Coming down to this uh, point here would be around 89%. If we go through this, then I would use this uh, low here that's left behind as well. Before we came back to this major one here, we've got these two minor points or minor lows that are left behind there as well. So coming back to uh, 38% there at uh, the moment. And on Friday, uh, you can see there that uh, we had a bit of a spike after the, the market opened. It was really quiet, uh, as you'll see. Uh, there we were sideways, sitting on the 200 MA at uh, the previous day's close. You can see the retracement there. We get a, a double bottom retracement back on that 200 MA and close. And then the Dow moving up uh, just before the end of the session. Plunge protection team coming in, bringing the markets back up during uh, the end of the week uh, trading session there. And in the... DAX, uh, different picture. We've got a bit of weakness in the DAX. We're still sideways here. And again, uh, the market on Friday, managing to buy at the previous days, low, selling at the previous days, uh, high and overnight prices are already down, which uh, you can see there. Market gapping lower, straight to the DP, sitting on the DP, breaks through. And then as I just move forward through here, you can see Again, you get a small cluster of uh, volume as prices are brought back through the DP. And then uh, we've got uh, resistance there at the BRN back through the 200 a bounce, uh, back through the DP, back to the 200, and then uh, moving lower. And the DP now and the 200 MA have become a uh, resistance uh, area so i'm just going to compress all this down so we can see where we are we've got the dp here the daily pivot so uh, it's bearish below and uh, talking of the low the low is just uh, down here at 50 points where you'd expect to find some support if uh, prices do move lower and if not and they manage to move it higher in the futures market watch the previous days high i.e friday because this ties in with the market uh, struggling at uh, this level, major level there now for the high of Friday. So keep an eye on uh, this as well. And let's have a look at uh, the metals. I'll just bring up the chart. Uh, we've got silver down on the overnight. It did well to come back on Friday, actually. It bounced off uh, the 200 MA. It's got to hold at this level. If not, we have a selection of fibs for the downside here, uh, down through the $25 area, which is currently holding at at the moment. 
but given the chance they will slam the market down as i've said before still holding the trade at the moment because i'm in at 24 dollars so i'll quite happily uh, sit uh, through the pullback on that one and give up the profit if necessary at break even or just uh, above it uh, locked in a few profits there and then i'll buy lower it's not a problem uh, because long term given the uh, dollar moving to the downside as we saw in the graphic uh, it's a doomed currency needs to be reset then ultimately uh, precious metals will move higher and not only that but also as we saw in the news to begin with uh, this here the fed wants higher inflation and will get it absolutely they will they're going to try and inflate the way out of the debt and the way to do that is to use uh, precious metals in order to do it but at the moment you can see that the dollar has got a bit of support there at 62 percent and that's why we're seeing a bit of pressure on the gold and uh, silver markets at the moment which uh, we can see there okay a quick look at uh, friday's uh, session and uh, in the early parts of the market uh, we see prices sideways even when the futures market opened we see the spike in volume there prices uh, not doing a lot to market didn't really react uh, when it did open though we had uh, some potential weakness and a sell signal and i was tempted to uh, get out at this point but decided to stay with it just uh, as we got the dp above the 200 ma and we got quite a bit of selling around and the weakness in the background that we saw already with uh, the low there the market was stuck in that sideways range for the previous two days just to see if it would uh, trade down to this level but uh, started to bounce back and uh, i decided to jump ship which was a shame really because as the market came back uh, 50 percent which you can see there prices then uh, eventually uh, turned around and headed down towards the low we can see them buying in here you can always see at the point where they decide to uh, reverse and then the market uh, started to uh, move back to the upside there again you can see these uh, how important it is to use these pivot points and also uh, to look at the volume prices then uh, coming back stuck in a sideways move and you can see there off the uh, 89 percent uh, retracement there as well with uh, another test and then price is just meandering back but a quiet uh, morning until eventually say moving to the upside there in the afternoon prices have managed you can see get above the uh, dp because they've trailed all the way back down and uh, to the 200 ma and as we saw with the dow uh, friday afternoon was just really really quiet uh, just stuck in a range but that spike up as the Dow moved higher but of course that didn't uh, last for long as prices uh, then uh, double topped and then uh, you'll see uh, just holding it a sideways range there above the uh, close as prices uh, traded sideways uh, into the close but eventually uh, moving higher on the overnight uh, I think this is it so we just drag this back not on the overnight uh, before the end of the session as uh, you can see here if I just reset the chart moving up with the Dow that we saw in the five minute chart there okay so I think that's it a uh, quick roundup of uh, everything where we are where we can expect to go uh, this week who's speaking this week etc and uh, yeah let's uh, see what happens uh, during uh, today it's just uh, reset the chart we're getting close to uh, the futures opening the market holding at the moment so again just to, to recap uh, watch the low of prices trade down to this need to get back above the 200 ma and the dp in order to uh, move higher and then just above for the dp you've got the uh, the high there as well and interestingly enough it's about uh, 70 points to the upside and uh, 50 to the low of uh, friday there Okay, that will do it for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.